We are joined by Dr. Chris Luley, who is here to talk to us a little bit more about tree decay. So we've got some trees here in Tulsa that experience some decay because of different reasons. Can you tell us what maybe a homeowner should be looking for? Sure. There are some symptoms of decay that homeowners can easily identify. First, they should, homeowners should know that decay is very common in urban trees. In fact, we did a study where there's some 60% of all trees have decay in the lower 10 feet of, of this trunk. So not necessarily concerning if decay is present, but symptoms of decay are symptoms like open cavities, right. as we have on this oak, which is open and obvious, but any size of cavity is usually due to decay. Okay. Another good symptom of decay is uh, the presence of wood decay fruiting structures, such as conks or brackets or mushrooms that develop at the base of a tree. Another excellent symptom of decay. Uh, a, one other common symptom of decay is the presence of carpenter ants, because carpenter ants nest in decayed wood and homeowners may see the frass at the base of the tree or carpenter ants, colonies of carpenter ants uh, associated with the tree. And then sometimes homeowners, homeowners can just see the decay, right? right? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's obvious, it's obvious, yeah. it's obvious and, and that is a valid symptom of decay. So if they have a concern about a tree that maybe is in their yard, maybe over their house or near it, or even up in branches, right? You can have decay up in branches. What should they do or, or how do you know whether there's potential risk there? Yes. And as I said, not all trees with decay have, have, uh, have concern associated with them. The best approach would be to call a certified arborist that has the skill and the knowledge to do a basic assessment. But in absence of somebody, a professional coming in, we often use some simple tools mm -hmm. to do a, a, a test for decay. One common tool is the a sounding mallet, which right. is a woodworker's mallet that you can tap to listen for that low, dull pitch that is associated with decay. And you can hear it in this tree that when trees have extensive decay, you will have a, a much uh, a much more low pitch associated with Right, that. and you having a trained ear or a certified arborist having sure. a trained ear to be able to detect that. Yes, it's a learned skill. I wouldn't necessarily expect the homeowner to be able to <laughs> pick a decayed tree out, but someone experienced with a mallet can do a fairly good assessment visually and using a mallet okay. to, to listen for decay to give you a general idea of how much decay is in that tree and if it's in concern and if a more advanced test with a resistograph or tomograph might be okay. might, might be needed. And I know you also have a drill here. What would that be for? Sure. Uh, there's another low-tech way to test test a tree for decay, and that's with a small diameter drill bit. And we use often use a, a ear plug to uh, for a depth gauge, oh, okay. and you can so you can probe into the tree where you believe the decay is present, mm -hmm. and look at the wood chips and feel the resistance to get an idea of the thickness of the outer shell of sound wood. Okay, and I'm I'm sure again that's a little bit of a train. You've tapped a lot of trees probably, <laughs> but that doesn't harm the tree or anything, does it? This is you would only want to do this if absolutely necessary okay. because. There are barriers, strong barriers to decay in tree in trees that the tree uses to keep the decay fungus from moving into healthy wood. And if you break that barrier with a drill, this type of drill, you can okay. potentially spread the decay. So it's not something we do without uh, without reason. Okay. But in the hands of a skilled arborist, this can be a valid tool to assess how much decay is present in so a tree. So when we're talking about um, a kind of compartmentalizing of decay, are there certain trees that do that better than other trees? There are, and it really does make a big difference of what kind of tree. Many, the, most of the oak species are good compartmentalizers, but even within the oak species, the white oak species are some of the strongest compartmentalizers or trees that contain decay well where the black and the red oaks and pin oaks are not as good, but they're better than say many of our maple species, especially silver maple and red maple okay. and some other species that their strategy is to grow faster than the decay okay. rather than to contain it where the oaks grow slower, but put a lot of energy into keeping decay in check. Okay, so what about the location of the decay on the tree? Are there certain areas that are more prone or maybe cause more failure? Sure. We see the majority of failures 
come from the crown just because there's more branches and more locations for decay to be present. But surprisingly, the next common lo location for decay to be present and for failures to occur is at the base and in the root system. And a big reason for that is because that is where trees are commonly wounded mm -hmm. by lawn mowers, vehicles, during construction, and wounds are always entrance points for decay fungi. So the base of the tree is particularly susceptible to wounding and then invasion by infection by decay fungi. Okay, so mm. about decay fungi, like mm. is there a certain one that does it or certain mm. ones that attack certain trees or can you tell me a little bit about that? There's many decay <laughs> fungi. I have a book out on decay fungi. There's, they're somewhat species specific, okay. but the ones that attack trees and decay trees are very specific. And there's, you know, there's maybe um, 500 or so that attack living trees, but only a small handful that are actually important. So many of the decay fungi that decay, that are uh, in trees are not as serious as, as others. So there's only a small handful that can actually actively decay healthy sapwood or wood in the tree and cause them to fail. Okay, and of course, you know, that I mean, those fungi are important, right? Because they're decomposing trees that fall down out in nature. But they are. We just don't want them to ruin our trees that are- <laughs> Just like everything else, there's, yeah. good, there's good and bad. So is it concerning the fact that we've got this big open decay hole here and the tree's also leaning? I mean, is that going to cause a off balance there? It's not good, I won't. I won't tell you that that <laughs> open cavity with a parch bench is good, but most trees actually fail when they're loaded by wind forces. Okay. And certainly gravity can cause some factors or some failures, but the most concern is high velocity winds. Which and, we have here and in Oklahoma. And you have all the time in Oklahoma, as we know, and the location of that decay in sound wood relative to that wind okay. load. So it's a misconception by many people that a lean is a bad because of it, it is going to cause the tree to fail. Trees are relatively well adapted to leans in most cases, except when there's extensive decay present as with, with this tree. Okay, so is there stronger wood in this tree or, or weaker wood because of that decay? There is, and wood, uh, depending on which way the load comes, which way the wind comes, mm -hmm. is, of different um, load carrying capacities, which wood mostly is strongest in tension okay. than it is in compression when it's when it's um, when it's compressed or, or or the wind is is forcing it in one direction, and it's weakest when it's twisted. Okay. So one of the best things that we can do for trees is to balance the crown so that load is distributed evenly to the tree when it's loaded with the wind. All right, well, thank Perfect. you for this information and I think we're gonna go check out some other technology. Great, Thanks. thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.